Okay, welcome back. We're going to uh, build on some of your previous experiences uh, manipulating images, this time using some different transformational tools. In the last section, we looked at uh, reflecting images over a, a reflecting line, reflecting a pre-image over a reflecting line to get an image. In this section, we're going to take a look at translating images using vectors and rotating images uh, using a slider. So to begin we're going to insert a new image and uh, I've, you notice that I've hid the algebra view. You can toggle that by hitting uh, Control shift a on a PC or Command shift a on a Mac. Call that. And uh, we're going to insert an image. I'm going to pick Stewie again so once you've selected this tool you need to click to define where the bottom left corner of the image will be by the way this is my son we'll use him a little bit later uh, let's pick family guy and we're going to create three points a b and c that will serve as the uh, corners of the image. So recall that you, using the um, selection tool, we're gonna right click on this image, go to object properties, and we're gonna define the position of the picture using point A as corner one. That'll be the bottom left point, bottom left corner. Corner two will define as B. Corner four, the upper uh, left corner, will define as point C. And as we did earlier, you can uh, drag these, redefine the picture as, as you will. We're going to actually use uh, the uh, coordinate grid a little bit more than we have in the past and we're going to actually snap points to the grid so you'll notice that there's a, a little a little toolbar here in the graphics view that allows you to uh, turn on or off the axes turn on or off a grid this will actually allow us to snap points to a grid or fix them to the grid. Let's go ahead and, and show the grid. And how about fix these points to the grid? So points A, B, and C should snap to points on the grid. Once I drag on them, notice that? Okay. Um, so we're going to actually use a create a couple of more points that are going to define a vector and then we're going to translate this picture of Stewie using the vector. So go down to the input bar. If it's not visible already, if you go to the view menu and pick input bar and show, that'll show the input bar. So for instance, I've hidden it here. Go to view input bar and show that input bar okay and we're going to create a point O to be the origin so remember that when you define um, points you have to use capital letters so capital O is going to equal the point zero zero we type in the X and Y coordinates as you normally would uh, using parentheses. So O is 0, 0. It's the origin. Hit enter. Might be helpful to have the axes on here. And then let's define another point, P, to equal. Point three negative two. 
Now this is, the picture's kind of in the way. I'm going to move this a little bit. So there's point A. Let's move C over here somewhere. And how about B over here? So I've created these two new points, O and P. Actually, OP is going to serve as a vector. I'm going to create a vector starting at O with a ending point at P. So to do that, to create a vector from O to P, you have a couple of options. Uh, from underneath the line tool, you can pick a vector between two points. And then click your starting point and your ending point. So there's vector OP. You could also type in, uh, and with vectors, you use a lowercase letter. You could type something like this U equals vector. And notice it, uh, it gives you syntax vector with a starting point and ending point. So literally, we could have typed this in. We do the exact same thing. We already have our vector in there, so no need, no need for that. But just to let you know, could do that. What we're going to do is use this vector to translate Stewie. So all, the transformation tools all appear underneath this button. By default, the fourth, the fourth button from the right. And you'll notice there's an option that says translate object by vector. There's also a rotate object, which we'll look at in a little bit, and a dilate object, which is also very handy. We're going to translate an object by a vector. So we pick this tool. We're going to click the object we want to translate. Then we're going to click on the vector, the translation vector. And now we have two Stewies. This is the translated image of the pre-image here. And you can drag on this vector. Notice that when you do that, the image of Stewie, its location changes. Now clicking on this one, pre-image, it's kind of interesting. If we put Stewie over here, you'd notice that the vector changes the position of Stewie, as you would expect. Um, if you reduce the filling of the translated image, like we did in the previous uh, tutorial, so by right-clicking on pick one prime, Go into Object Properties. You can change the opacity to, let's say, about 30%. Makes it a little bit easier for kids to tell the difference between the, to differentiate between the pre-image and the image. If you drag uh, B on top of A so the vector goes nowhere, you'll see these match up exactly. So some, some things to try with this, definitely drag on your vector once you replicate the sketch. Drag on your vector. Uh, I want you to begin exploring some other transformational tools and then try the dilation tool. We're going to uh, actually explore that formally in the, in the next video, but why not start now? Uh, you're going to need to construct a slider uh, to control the uh, factor of the the magnitude of the dilation. We'll talk more about that next time.